Okay, uh, welcome. Uh, let's welcome our last speaker in this dev room, Jakub Yalan, with the talk Consistent PKSS 11 in Operating Systems. Hello, do you hear me? It looks like it's working. So, welcome to the last talk of today, of this year's first dev in security dev room. I appreciate that so many of you stayed here for so long for the end of uh, today. So my name is Jakub Belen. I'm software engineer in Red Hat. And what I work on is mostly OpenSC and smart card related stuff in operating system RHEL and Fedora. My, my talk is named very widely about consistent PKCS11 in operating system, but I will focus mostly on RHEL and Fedora, which is the thing where we implemented this uh, thing. So before we go to the details, what we did, I will ask a few questions. Do you know what are private keys? Is there anyone who doesn't know it? So uh, do you know what they can be used for? Many things. They can be used for mail signing, mail decryption. Uh, many people probably use SSH, so they can use for, be used for authentication. Many people are developers, so they use it for Git. Uh, it can be used also for signing git commits, tags. Uh, it can be used for TLS client authentication in, in HTTPS. Uh, and basically, it's just more secure password replacement uh, that that cannot be that doesn't travel through the network and that cannot be copied on a way. But anyone of you do know where uh, your, are your private keys stored? Are they are or on, on your hard drive? Are they in your computer memory when you, when, when, when you are using them? Or do you have some backup in cloud? Encrypted, unencrypted? Do you know it? Uh, I guess everyone saw these pictures somewhere. Uh, so software and hardware has bugs. And uh, if some of them show, they might, uh, they might, uh, make your keys available to any attacker. And this is not something that you want, so that's a good thing to update. But if there are some zero-day exploits, you don't know which, which zero-day zero, zero exploits are around here, and uh, how can you protect against them? Yes, the answer is, uh, uh, spe Answer is uh, dedicated hardware which can store your, store your private keys, and uh, that doesn't have any way, any simple way how to retrieve the private keys from such, such a smart card, from YubiKey, or from HSM or other uh, separated hardware, unless there is bug in there. But the API should be pretty strict to avoid it. Last year I talked, I had talk here of a similar beginning. I showed up some. Examples how PKCS11 can be used in various applications, but uh, it didn't look like very easy for anyone, I think. So this was one of the things that we tried to, to improve. This is like large image of all the tools that are somehow related to smart cards in operating system in Linux. This is this looks very complicated, but what what you should care about is uh, the top top. It, Top boxes which show the, client, the applications that are that want to use smart cards, and on bottom uh, bottom there is smart cards, and something between it should be like implementation detail for detail for for user for system administrator for application developer. So it, the user wants to have it some, somehow like this. They talk to some magic and that magic works. So as I said already, we are dealing with PKCS11, I will try to explain what is PKCS11, how we try to improve uh, its usage in operating system. Uh, then I will go through applications, how, how they uh, use PKCS11 and what we try to improve and what we improved. And if you are a developer or you would like to use it in your application, I will um, show you some ideas that you might check. And let's go for it. So PKCS11, 
PKCS11 is open standard for cryptographic tokens, controlling authentication information, personal identity, cryptographic key certificates, digital signatures, and so forth. Basically, as a user, you, as a user so far, you meet PKCS11 as a low-level CAPI in level in way of uh, shared shared module shared 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 module that is somewhere on your hard drive. Uh, it, it allows you to do operation with private keys, with uh, read public keys, read certificates. Uh, if you want to learn more, it's open standard, so you don't have you do not not have to buy it as ISO standards and so on. So, feel free to go, uh, check uh, Oasis uh, website, which provides the standards in full length. So I I showed up show some pictures already. We want to have the PKCS11 consistent. So we want to have it system-wide for usage and configuration. Uh, there are some examples of the uh, commands that I showed last year or uh, in the previous slides. One first is P11 tool from GNU TLS. It is identifying a smart card or something on a smart card as PKCS11 URA. Then there is a PKCS11 tool from OpenSC it's identifying object uh, by its ID, its type, and it can have much, much more switches, but it's something completely different than the first one. And for the third example is uh, SSH that doesn't have any, any way how to specify uh, what key to use from the smart card or from your token. So this is not consistent. We basically unified on uh, PKCS11 URAs because they are the strongest and they can express any other uh, possibility what was used in the wild. Uh, PKCS11 URA has also advantage that is uh, standardized uh, URA scheme. So in the places where usually people use files for private keys, they can use uh, URA scheme starting with PKCS11, and it is very easy to detect, in, detect it in, uh, in the software that is using the smart card. Uh, it can uniquely name like each object on, on the system in the smart card. It can name also the tokens, readers, anything uh, in that huge image that I showed previously. Uh, you can filter by many Many, many PKCS11 attributes that are available, or you can use just PKCS11 scheme that will basically say your application use something from that PKCS11 from smart cards. That is basically how it how it how it how it worked in SSH. In the past, you got a PKCS11 object. Now you can provide PKCS11 URI, and it will just find in the system that uh, what it, what it wants. The other thing that is related to it is P11 kit. We and it's bas it's uh, related related to, um, to the PKCS11 URIs because in this URI you don't see where where is the PKCS11 module that you still need. So P P11 kit provides a system wide uh, store for all the PKCS11 modules that that are in the system available. Installation is uh, simple as putting a text file into this directory. It's usually done by package manager if you've got Fedora. This is, for example, the OpenSC PKCS11 module. Uh, and all these modules are loaded automatically by, the, uh, by any application that will be using either P11 kit or P11 kit proxy shared object for the application that already have some PKCS11 support. Uh, the advantage of it, this is also that uh, if you've got HSM or some other, uh, other uh, hardware token that is not supported, let's say, for, by OpenSC or it's not supported by any other tool that is in the system, you can plug it into, into the system-wide registry as any other, and it works. So let's have a look how it works in applications. Did someone use uh, OpenSSH with uh, PKCS11 support? 
few people are there. So this is how it how it looks like in OpenSSH upstream. Uh, let's say release seven nine. First thing you need to do is using SSH keygen uh, with uh, argument pointing to PKCS eleven module, uh, and it will list you the public keys that are that, that uh, OpenSSH finds in uh, in your module. It doesn't say what type of the public key is. If it is from certificate, it doesn't say uh, how big is it, any labels, nothing. And other thing, it didn't support ECDSA for until recently. For authentication, you do the same thing. Yeah, you do not want to provide a PKCS 11 module to applications if you want to use them. You want just to write PKCS 11 dash something. Public key authentication worked the same way. You had a specific switch. Uh, I guess this, it shouldn't be I, it should be uppercase I. That's bug. Uh, and OpenSSH uh, listed all the keys that it found there, tried them on the server, and if one worked, it tried to authenticate you with this, with this key. If you had more keys on the, on the token, it, 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 it used the first one that it found that worked, and you were not able to choose any other. So we also don't want to write PKCS 11 module on command line on configuration file anywhere. Uh, and sometimes you would like to fil filter the keys. So this is how it works uh, with Fedora 28 and later. You can use uh, PKCS 11 uh, scheme, scheme here for the same thing. It also lists the PKCS 11 URI in the SSH key again. So you basically know what what the, what what is the key about. If it is uh, authentication key, if it is signature key, if it is decryption key, or if it is something else from uh, the card. For authentication, you can again use just uh, your scheme, and it will do the same thing. And if you want to use some different key, you use URI like this, uh, which will say that you should use the key number two or key ID too. The same thing works also with SSH agent. Uh, you can add uh, any key from smart card to SSH agent and then, out, then, then it will work from there and you can authenticate uh, anywhere. The same thing will work also in configuration file which is pretty handy. In this case you've got also you see somehow longer uh, PKCS 11 URI that is using directly module path uh, part of the URI that allows uh, to skip the P11 kit proxy and directly loads the OpenSC PKCS 11 module. But that's just a uh, side note. So the same thing should also work for the HTTPS clients. Let's say we've got uh, some scripts or some application that run that needs to connect to some uh, API or to transfer some data using wget or curl. In the past, it was it, it needed like files that are stored somewhere on the hard drive, probably unencrypted if it was in script, or it has uh, the encryption key or pin or pass passphrase somewhere next to it. So in this case, we can provide again PKCS 11 URI for certificate and private key options and uh, connect uh, to TL to TLS server using HTTPS uh, and to use TLS client authentication as uh, from web browser. On the other side, there are the HTTPS servers. So for the users to have this nice shiny green lock, uh, the server needs to provide again signature proof that the server is really the server that you want to talk about talk to. And uh, again, the same thing was if the, if the keys get compromised, uh, you, you can, the users might be, be talking to something, dif something different. This was one of, the, one, one of the things that worked for Heartbleed, if I remember well. For, so for HTTPD or NGINX, you can configure uh, PK, 
you can configure your HSM to be able to store private key on the HSM and uh, work with them. For example, an Nginx configuration file doesn't support this for the certificate yet, but it's uh, not a big deal because the, the important thing that you want to have on the on hardware, on separate hardware, is the private key. That, that's the thing that you should care. Did anyone use Firefox with uh, smart cards or YubiKeys? So you probably know this window. This is uh, one of the, probably one of the older uh, windows in the old design, not redesigned uh, throughout, throughout uh, the ages. It looks really ugly and it's again asking for client or for user to write their like module file name. What, what users should know about module file name? If you know something about it, you can do it. If you don't know, you don't have to do it in uh, Fedora 29 or something, maybe 30. Uh, NSS will be loading the P11 key proxy by default. So if uh, the website requests to authenticate, request you to authenticate using uh, TLS client authentication, it just should work. So we are getting to the end. So if if you if you wrote some application or you want to write some application using smart card or using some uh, hardware security modules or tokens uh, or your application might might already work. If if I didn't mention it here, it might not. If uh, if you are writing some application, then you should. Try to use like some high-level crypto uh, library. Uh, P11 kit is also a good thing to start if you want to write uh, something with PKCS11. And if you would like, if you would be searching how to identify the things on the smart card, PKCS11 URI thing URI is something that I can recommend you. If you don't have any smart card or any uh, uh, any token you can try it at home. Most of the current computers have already TPM2, and there is already a TPM2 PKCS11 project that basically allows you to uh, use your TPM as smart card. It has disadvantage that it uh, the keys are tied tied to your machine. They, you can't move them around as a smart card, but. Uh, most of the keys that you generate for SSH or for something else are usually left on your co computer and you don't move them around. If you would like uh, to do some testing, there is SoftHSM, software implementation of PKCS11 that, that stores data on file system, so it's not, not more secure than uh, storing the file, files directly, but it's good for testing. And that's all. So if there's something that you should remember, uh, there are bugs in software and hardware that might expose your private keys. That's something that we don't, do not want to. So to prevent this or minimize, minimize consequences, uh, storing uh, the private keys in hardware is a good idea. If you've got Fedora or if you saw RHEL 8 Beta, the things that I showed here are, are already there. So you can feel free to check it. Uh, test it, and if something will not work, just uh, drop me a mail, write me something. I would be glad for feedback. So I guess that's all. So there is five minutes for questions. Thank you. So you mentioned a couple of times that you can try it out in latest Fedora versions. So has this work been also upstreamed so that other distributions can benefit from uh, it? The PKCS 11 URIs, um, I offered it upstream, but it's not merged yet. Is there any blockers or is it just a matter of time and review? Um, it's a matter of OpenBSD, I would say. Like, I, I've got the feeling that they, like during the last five years, they were not, not at all interested in the PKCS 11 things that are in OpenSSH. Uh, just 
two weeks ago or something, they merged the ECDSA patch for PKCS11, which is a good thing, but uh, to get them to merge uh, the PKCS11 URI, that I cannot uh, guess how long it might take. It might, it might be next week, but it might be in five years. <laughs> And at least the remaining projects are they still? Sorry. And the remaining projects beyond like OpenSH and OpenBSD sponsored ones, like Nginx. Uh, Nginx. Uh, the other things should be uh, already in upstreams. Nginx uh, and HTTP servers. Any other question? <laughs> uh, how about uh, GPG PGP? Have you, are you working on that? Is someone working on that? Yeah, that is also another pain point. Uh, the problem with uh, GPG is that uh, they do not uh, use PKCS11. They, they've got uh, their S agent or something that directly talks to PCSC. As if we can go to, to this image, they've got something that talks uh, to this thing. So we basically cannot affect it. There is also a project that, that is as agent PKCS11, but I wasn't able to make it working so far. So for GPG, any help would be obviously appreciated, but I didn't manage to make it working so far. So thank you for your talk. Um, I'm not too familiar with uh, P11 Kit Proxy, but um, would you be able to use uh, sev uh, several separate um, uh, instances of PKCS11 for, for example, different uh, smart cards to be used? Uh, I, I'm not sure. Like, uh, how do you mean it? In the system, there are separate. Uh, P there can be separate PKCS11 modules. But uh, using PKCS11 proxy, we like, unify them and provide everything in one module, which is uh, easier for configuration and everything I said. But uh, it doesn't prevent you for, from writing something like I showed here. Where was it? Uh, like show, I showed here. You can write uh, PKCS11 URI that doesn't have the, uh, that has the module path part. And in, in that case, you, you basically skip the uh, P11 kit proxy and uh, talk directly to this module. Yeah, okay. That's it. Yeah. Uh, but that, uh, that isn't like it's implemented in this way, but there isn't anything in uh, the proxy, uh, the P11 kit, that does the similar behavior like this. Uh, I'm not sure if there, there, there is not, Daiki. I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly, but uh, this, this, is, uh, this is the way how P11 kit, uh, PKCS11 URI is written. Or do you want to say something? Yeah. <laughs> so, so I have no idea, but uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's actually bypassed the uh, yeah, processing. Well, there are there are two ways how the P, yeah, yeah. how the PKCS11 URI is evaluated. One way is, uh, for example, as in OpenSSH, where is everything implemented in OpenSSH, and the P11 kit proxy is used only by default if you do not provide this module path. And the other way is going through the P11 kit P11 kit directly, and in that case, you provide this URI to P11 kit. And then it then it returns you the results. And I'm actually not sure how it's implemented there, but I think if you provide P11 kit uh, module path, it will talk directly to it, or it will so, skip it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. With different with different libraries. Yes. Then we use yeah. different drivers. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Okay. Sorry, I didn't understand it correctly. So I guess we are out of the time. Yeah, All right, we one have more question. One minute. <laughs> so one more question. 